Hello and welcome. This is Bob Lessick at Johns Hopkins. In this lecture, we will examine primary and secondary keys and how they operate as unique identifiers. We will look into relational databases. By connecting smaller databases, information can be divided without an excessive burden on a single database. Most biological databases are set up in this manner. I recognize that many of us are coming from very different backgrounds. For those very familiar with databases, this should serve as a pretty short review. For those less familiar, I hope to give you a good introduction. After viewing this lecture, we should be able to define some terms, such as field, record, relational database, as well as primary and secondary key. Be able to find a primary key when you look at a database. It's usually an identifier. It's usually a series of numbers or letters. It's not data. Look at the setup of a relational database, which is a series of linked databases. Finally, explain how a secondary key in one database can serve as the primary key in another database, usually a linked database. One of the simplest forms of a database is a spreadsheet. It's basically a grid with rows and columns. There was an old spreadsheet program called Lotus123 for those who remember. The most commonly used spreadsheet today is Microsoft Excel. Usually, the columns represent a particular type of data. That is a field, one of our key terms for this lecture. The column header usually describes the field. Name, birth date, count balance, a particular statistic. Fields are usually specific for certain types of data. For instance, a date field might be set up in a desired format, like month slash day slash year. We can then call the rows records, sometimes known as entries. Essentially, the terms are synonymous for this purpose. A record might be an individual person in a directory, or it might be a DNA sequence in a biological database. Our last definition is of a primary key. Each record in a database should contain a unique identifier. It's often numerical or alphanumerical. Alphanumerical simply means mixed letters and numbers. There should be no duplication when it comes to a primary key. One identifier should represent one and only one record. We will see examples shortly. Here is some data from United States presidential elections. There are seven columns. Canned is an identifier for a presidential candidate. Can slash year is an identifier for a candidate in a particular election. Candidate is the name of a candidate. That's data. That's not an identifier. Year is also data. Party represents data. For which party was that candidate affiliated? EV stands for electoral votes. The candidate with 270 or more is the winner of that election. POP vote stands for popular votes, which does not decide elections. The first question to think about is what is the primary key in this database? You should only have two choices. Only two columns are identifiers. Those two columns are marked canned and canned year. How are they different? Which is the primary key? The primary key is actually canned year. For instance, 1992 D1 means the Democratic candidate in 1992, so that's William Jefferson Clinton. Each record represents a vote total in a particular year, so canned year is unambiguous. Canned is what we call a secondary key that represents one candidate. That candidate could have run more than once. So we can see how it differs from canned in uniqueness. The canned identifier represents the candidate, and canned year represents a candidate's vote total in a year. So it's more specific to the record in this case, and is therefore a primary key in this database. 
Here is one of the most popular databases on the internet, and I'll use it to illustrate in a crude way how to set up a database. That's the Internet Movie Database. Many of you are probably familiar with IMDB, but if not, it's a very commonly used website, and it's basically a relational database. This is the movie page for the 2014 movie Godzilla. Now, there are many movies with the title Godzilla, so how do I click the right one? Well, here's where you could use a primary key. And when you click the link marked Godzilla 2014, you are actually accessing a primary key without even knowing it. The primary key is right here on this page if you know where to find it. Where is that primary key? It's right in the URL. You see imdb.com title slash tt and then it's small, but you can find it yourself on the web. You see the identifier 0831387, and essentially that's a primary key in the movie title database. Now a movie database might look something like this, but I've really oversimplified it. I'm not going to suggest that IMDB is based on a simple spreadsheet, but let's take a look at this data on the bottom. The primary key in this case is ident which lists an actor's work in a particular movie. A secondary key is movie ID. So you see movie ID. That's the number we saw on the last slide, 831387. I left off the preceding zero. That's a primary key in the movie title database. But if this is a movie role database, that would be a secondary key because there are several actors in the same movie. I only listed three. You might also notice that actor ID is also a secondary key. If you notice, the 300 identifier appears twice for Juliette Binoche. The movie ID fields, essentially in IMDb, become accessible through links, so that when you click on Godzilla 2014, you're really clicking on the URL that has the 831387 you're actually clicking on a primary key in the movie title database. You would be clicking on a secondary key in this particular database. So let's look at that database that we've already seen. That's at the top. And in particular, let's look at the actor Aaron Taylor Johnson. Now we don't want to put all of his information into this top database because this is movie roles. That might become a little too cumbersome. So we take that secondary key in the top database and make it a primary key in the actor database at the bottom. So we see Aaron Taylor Johnson was born on June 30th, 1990 in England, and you could get a whole bunch of other information into that database, but that's the basic idea. We can link databases together by taking a secondary key in one database, or in one relation, and making it a primary key in a related database, or relation. So basically, IMDB like the biology databases, tend to be relational databases, and the idea is to avoid too many fields in one database. The goal is to link smaller databases together. Each smaller database can be called a relation. The concept is that a secondary key in one database can serve as a primary key in another database. So if you're on those movie roles and you click the actor ID, that might link to the actor database as a primary key. We can think of the internet as one large relational database because every time we access a page on the internet essentially it's a text file, sometimes with a lot of markup. Whenever you click on a link you're clicking on a primary key to the other database which is that website which contains its own set of information. So URLs essentially represent primary keys. Think about biological databases. On a DNA sequence record, we might not want to put every single thing known about this DNA sequence into one single record. So we could link to a protein database to access proteins coded for by this DNA sequence. Or maybe a structure database for that protein structure. Or a scientific literature database for papers written about this particular piece of DNA. Relational, or connected, databases come in very handy. 
NCBI is a frequently used website and database in bioinformatics. It is one of the most used websites in the world with millions of hits daily. It is based at the National Library of Medicine at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. What's there? Well, go to the website and take a look around. You will find databases for scientific literature, DNA sequences, organism taxonomy, gene expression data, well, quite a bit. It's a huge relational database. So basically, to summarize, be able to recognize the primary key. That's the most unique identifier, and it's usually a series of numbers and letters. It's not data, so don't look for, for instance, a vote total and say that's a primary key. And relational databases are able to link related data. In the case of IMDB, it's a movie database that can be linked to an actor database. But at MCBI, we can see that a nucleotide database can be linked to a protein database and also linked to a literature database and a structure database and a host of other databases. I hope this lecture on databases is helpful to understanding the concept of databases and good luck.